So, guys. <laughs> the tables have turned. Where's my headphones? It's my time for a story. So where's my headphones? <sighs> now you see how it feels. So? I'm going to interrupt every second. <laughs> Shit. That's that's more reserved for when I have a story. <laughs> so tell me what you guys know about what happened to Nazis. Well, this reminds me of the one time when I was in high school. After the war. <laughs> <laughs> when I was on the volleyball team. <laughs> what happened? What do you know that <laughs> happened to the Nazis after World War II was over? Nuremberg trials. Okay. So, some of them changed their names. Yeah. Um, Honestly, before I watched Hunting Hitler, I didn't know they fled to um, South America. <laughs> how many? How many people do you think were convicted in the Nuremberg trials? Sixty-eight. I was gonna say forty-seven, <laughs> but I don't actually know. That was just a guess. That, that's okay. I'm asking for guesses. So it, it was a little bit more than that. A uh, total of 161 oh, fuck, yes. Wow, people, Nazis, were convicted from the Nuremberg trials. And there were like over a little over 200 people who were on trial or just about 200 people on trial. And one now is on trial. And one now. The, the last one ever. But, I mean, they, they can't get another one. But think of like, <laughs> OK, so you've got a ratio of like a li- about. 161 people from just the Nuremberg trials who were convicted of war crimes. Think about this, the atrocities in general from the Holocaust, right? How many, how many Jews were exterminated in the Holocaust? Millions. Six million. Six million. Tom, you you like (laughs) tone down your, your volunteerism here. Okay, so 161 convictions for 6 million Jews. That's, like, not okay. Seems like not the appropriate ratio, right? Correct, but I'm not defending this at all. This is a genuine question. How many, like, like, what was the ratio of Jews to Nazis? Were there far less Nazis than Jews? Well, they like, should have so, defended themselves. So the no, that is not what I'm saying. I, this is a genu- genuine question. Like I, I didn't, I know. I that- think I'm. I think I'm going to answer what you're saying. So for so the number of actively participate, like the number of Nazis it took to actively participate in exterminating six million Jews, was between estimated between two hundred thousand to a million Nazis. Mm. It took that many people to be actively involved in the Holocaust. Now, does that include soldiers? Just includes people who are who Who actively participated in extermination of Jews. So the ones that were so like in the the camps, camps, rounding up Jews to go to the camps, SS, SS, all of that. Gestapo. Exactly. So 161 people were convicted. That's ridiculous. That's Out of at minimum 200,000 to have actively participated in so this. So that's like 0.01%. It's like ugh, disgusting. Like what ha- what do you think happened <sighs> to these Nazis? Well, clearly they either died or they fled. There's too many people to not, you know. Or they just like stayed in Germany, you know, yeah. and they were fine. Or, like, somewhere in Europe? Well, there was no documentation. How would they prove that they were Nazi? Oh, but there was a lot of documentation. Well, I mean... That's, the, that's like, the other crazy fucking thing about the Nazis is that their documentation was meticulous. I mean, think about it. Every person who walked through the camps, whether it be a labor camp or a death camp, they numbered them. They tattooed them. Uh, my... Like ancestors who died in the Holocaust had numbers associated with them, and they are in books that exist today. That's, they were meticulous. 
that's nuts. It did. It is. It's crazy. So they, but that was the that was the people that they were record keeping for the the people that they exterminated. But mm-hmm. they must have had something written down if they were that meticulous with the Jewish people or the people who mm-hmm. you know were against the Nazi movement. They must have had like you know war records and stuff. Absolutely. Or the Nazis. But wouldn't you think that they would try to destroy that information? Oh, you're right, Jen. But it's too late, probably, to destroy it. By the time they realized they needed to destroy it, it was like too late, you know? I mean, some people still have those records, like their personal historical records. So, like, you know, those those grandparents you know now at this point um great grandparents they may still have records of their um military history in the war but others may have had false papers created and so, and with those false papers they may have stayed they may have fled like a fake id yep um so around so right after the war the Red Cross was distributing um, and creating passports for people to, you know, be reconnected with their families, to be able to go back. Because, like, in, in for a lot of people, the documents were destroyed from the bombings and just everything that happened in the war. Um, and so you had some people who were willing to falsify documents and... Nazis very, very prevalently fled to avoid prosecution because they didn't know like how many people were going to be convicted for war crimes, what the Nuremberg trials were going, you know, what that the extent of that would be. And so a lot of people did flee. And there were unfortunately people who were willing to help Nazis flee. Sympathizers. They were, yeah, sim- exactly. Pe- it's not like at the, at, you know, it's interesting to put yourself into this perspective. Right at the end of the war in, in Europe, it was May 8th, 1945. Is that when the war ended? That was VE Day. VE Day? Victory in Europe Day. Oh, okay, gotcha. When the Germans surrendered, Hitler commits suicide in his bunker. Supposedly. Supposedly. It's not like everyone who was a Nazi suddenly stopped being a Nazi. Right? Some people realize, like, holy shit, I was a part of something terrible. Could have been partly a fear, too. But, like, they still existed. They still, a lot of people who believed in that Nazi doctrine, they kept believing it. Well, that was going to be a question, too. Like, what do you is there a statistic of um, like a number for people who were kind of forced into the Nazi party who out of out of fear of being executed or, um, you know, their family you know being in danger? I don't know if there is an actual n- n- statistic I can give you aside from the fact that. In the 40s, in Germany, if you were 18 year between 18 and I think it was 55, you were drafted into the military. Mm-hmm. So choice or no choice, whether you believed in the Nazi doctrine or not, like, sorry, you were fighting for it. So whether there was a belief or not, hard to say, but every of age male was fighting for it. Which is, it's crazy, Um, you know, and it's good to know that we're not in like a a society today where everyone is drafted into the military, but that was the time. So I don't know how, so I'm sure there was a number of how many people were actively in the party, which were in the, you know, thousands, Um, but almost 10% of the population died in World War II. Okay. Of the German population. Of the German population. Wow, that's a lot. It is a lot. Um, so like there were, there were some significant losses and after the war, you know, you've got the U S that has Western Germany, you know, and has, you know, that's helping to build Western Germany. You've got the, the Soviet Union that has the Eastern Bloc, Berlin wall Mm -hmm. dividing. Correct. So 
right after the war, you've got people who are staying or people who are fleeing. And it's estimated that 9,000 Nazis, like true Nazi, Nazi supporters, fled Germany and Europe and went to South America. It's a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people went to, the majority went to Argentina right after the war because Juan Perón, if you uh, have seen the movie Evita. I have not, but it's also a Broadway musical. Um, Madonna stars in the movie. And it is all about like, it's kind of a romanticized version, I think, of like Mm -hmm. him, but it was a a military dictatorship Mm -hmm. and he was a fascist. Don't cry for me, Argentina. They were pilfering the money of the Argentinians and spending it on themselves and their, you know, money, uh, be like their homes and shit like that. Um, but they were t- total Nazi supporters. Mm, interesting. So like approximately 5,000 of the 9,000 fled to Argentina right after the war. But Perón and his military dictatorship fell in 1955. And it was not a friendly place to be for Nazis because everything that Perón stood for, the new government was anti. So Hmm. like Nazi support, no way. Anything was anti-Perón. And so a lot of people, they went to either Brazil or they traveled across the border to Chile, but stayed in South America. Because another really interesting part thing about South America in this time frame, like 50s, 60s, and 70s, right after the war was the Cold War. And the US democracy and communism, that was the next big controversy. Correct. Like the next big thing. Mm-hmm. McCarthyism. So, so, yeah, so there was a hate, mutual hatred of communists from both the U.S. and Nazism. Okay. So, okay, so I, I went to, um, this is one of the most interesting things that I learned when I was in school for um, political science. It was one of my first poli-sci courses. And it talked about like the political spectrum and it was there's like a grid of like what is, you know, importance of security, democracy. And I forget what the other parts of the grid were, Um, but like the spectrum is. Communism on the very far left Mm -hmm. and fascism on the very far right. Mm -hmm. So like the utmost left wing you can get is communism. Correct. And the utmost right wing you can get is fascism. What about socialism? Where's that at? Socialism is the left, but like a little bit more towards the center. So if the center is my microphone, this is obviously my left. What's the difference between that and communism? So there are some similarities, but this is what's very confusing about like Nazism and fascism and communism, socialism, is that like things like the Nazi party, it was called... Like the German Socialist Workers Party. Right. And so people were very confused. Like, oh, well, it's like for the people. It's for the workers. But in reality, it was fascism. Mm. So uh, like big components of fascism is nationalism, like closed itself out to other people, racism, um, the state. Um, There are certain things that like the state provides, but otherwise it's like free. um, I don't want to say free market. But um, a free health care. No, no, that's socialism. It's like communism. everything is like done for the state by the state. And in communism, it's like everything is rem- removed so that like this, the state distributes everything. But it's like the whole racism mm. um, and pervasiveness that you see in fascism is different. Like fascism is very like military. Communism is I don't want to say anti-military, but it's like pe- the people in the the workers movement is is what is most important. So what is North Korea? The fascism? Yes. Hmm. It's a military dictatorship. Mm-hmm. So it is the total opposite, like ends of the world. But in in Germany, the Socialist Party 
it was called the Socialist Party, but it was really Nazism. And that was like to help broaden the message to the masses. And so you see very similar parties called that in South America. So they were called like the Socialist Party of Chile, but they were wearing swastikas and like they were from European descent and they were very racist towards the indigenous people and things like that. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I'm th- I'm kind of setting the stage here, but I digress. Um, obviously, this is a plug for a podcast that I have uh, done a lot of research on called Colonia Dignidad, a Nazi cult in Chile. And this is about a man named Paul Schaefer. Who was inspired by the same cult leader that inspired Jim Jones. Interesting. Hmm. William Branham was like a revivalist and he was like touring Europe right after the war. And Paul Schaefer, you know, just like any charismatic cult leader, grabbed on to this need and took advantage and said like, wow, people are looking for like a way to cope with all the moral atrocities that happened during the war. That guy was an American, that preacher? Yes. Jim Jones? He reminded me, no, not Jim Jones, the other guy. Branham. He mm-hmm. reminded he was me a from lot K- of... Born uh, in Kentucky. He reminded me a lot of that one guy. I can't remember his name. That preacher. My wife's a slut, kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his guy? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like it, when, when the guy I, in Texas. Yeah, when I put that sound clip into the episode that you did, it reminded me a lot of that guy. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, you need to trust in Jesus. They you know? believed in yeah. the serpent seed document doctrine, which <clears throat> uh, believes that Eve had sex with the snake well, in you, the Garden of Eden. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, what do you believe? No, <laughs> none of that. <laughs> but uh, but it had to do with like, the, and, and therefore women are subservient, like they're, they're the root of evil. And what's the website? uh, (laughs) So Paul Schaefer, he takes takes his this uh, feeling of like, holy shit, I have to deal with what the Nazis did as terrible human beings after the war and created. Well, first he started, you know, sexually abusing young boys in his Mm -hmm. congregation back when he was in Germany. And this is right after the war? This is right after the war. So he was actually a a medic. He was a, so he was in his late teens, early 20s when the war broke out. Mm -hmm. And he was a Nazi medic. And after the war, so he's not necessarily known for like terrible things he did during the war. He's known for the terrible things he did after the war. Gotcha. So when the war is over, he he follows these teachings, helps him find excuses to get closer to young boys, which he can then abuse and molest. Uh, and then some moms report the fact that he was abusing their sons. This is in and this is while he's Chile. still in Germany. Oh, this this in Germany. is before they go to Chile. Oh, okay. This is before the war is, ended? No, no, no. This is right after the war ended. Oh, okay. He you. starts a congregation and his, and two mothers say, you are my son's Two con- German mothers? Yes. So he's still... Why, why didn't he flee right then? Because he wasn't necessarily fleeing from his Nazi crimes. Oh, because he didn't really do anything that he bad. He was just a medic. Like, I got he, you. Didn't yeah, yeah. Nec- he, was, he was a Nazi. Yeah. Okay. Just like any other soldier but drafted. he wasn't going to be tried for murder. He, like, he no, wasn't an he officer wasn't, or anything. He yeah. wasn't in the SS. He wasn't like going to be tried for murdering Jews or anything like that. But when the war was over, he kind of capitalized. He, was a, he grew up religious, but he capitalized on this whole moral dilemma that a lot of Germans were facing about what happened. So the Germans had remorse for what they did? Some did. Yeah. Some were like, holy shit, I'm a part of this. I was a part of this. I had, you know, some say they had no idea. Some really did. But whatever. So he so he wasn't necessarily known for what happened during the war, but what happened after. So two mothers came forward to the police and said, my sons are accusing this man of assaulting them. And Paul Schaefer did what all the other Nazis seemed to do. Fled. He he chose to escape. So he had a a chance meeting with the German ambassador to Chile, and that person helped arrange Paul Schaefer 
and his congregation to go settle in Chile. The whole congregation went with him? Yes. Hmm. At first, it was just a couple of people that went to help like set it up. But a couple of years later, everyone else joined him. And in its bi- at its peak, there were 300 members of the congregation Ooh, there with that's him a lot. in Chile. So there was a deal that was struck between Paul Schaefer and the government, though. Like, okay, Paul Schaefer, you can have amnesty if you provide our government with intelligence. Intelligence for... For what for happened? What? For German intelligence? For, the, for Chilean people. People okay. in the area, what was going on in the camp. Oh, so he's going to spy on the Chilean people. He was going to help spy on the oh, people of Chile. Okay. okay. That was the deal. Oh, because, and he would have to pay taxes. Ta- because there was just a takeover of the... Why did they want to spy on their own people? <laughs> I asked like that like I'm not living in America uh, right now. <laughs> like I don't have a cell phone right now. <laughs> so, or an Apple Watch. <laughs> yeah. So so he they struck a deal. And he was all too willing to comply. And so in the very, like, in the foothills of the Andes Mountains, built was built a colony. called It was called Colonia Dignidad. They wouldn't have to pay taxes. That was also part of the deal. And so on f- the first 4,400 acres of land, they started to build. But it was built more like a military base. Barbed wire fences with trip wires and codes and watchtowers. And there were German shepherds and guards with guns. And I mean, it like the security is more advanced than other military bases in the world. Where did he get his money from to do this? Do you know? The interesting thing is we we don't exactly know was this partially funded by donations? Donations. Um, some accounts have have said that the colony was getting mail from people even in the U.S. with checks. Was it the Chilean government? Um, a big portion definitely was, but also like how much did the German government actually ha- have as part of this? So. Basically, this is a much bigger story, and I will just say, listen to the podcast, Big Me Dad, to get a shit ton of details. But the crux of it is, there were two big, horrible things that were going on within this colony. One, with the congregation that Paul Schaefer had, 300 people of his own flock, he was abusing them. The kids. He was abusing the children sexually, the boys. He was drugging and subduing the adults so that they would comply. He was torturing them with like, they brought cattle prods from fucking Germany and they were Were electroshocking them. These were his original members too? Or were these Chilean people? They were his original members from Germany. Do you know the percentage? Were there any Chilean people or? No. They were only the, German, so the, he was doing this to his own people? They were he was doing it to his own people. Oh, the shit. only Chileans that were in the camp were people that were I were abducted from him. So he mm. was doing this to his own people. They were all they only spoke God, German. Damn. They did abduct like there were some instances where they were abducting children from the local area or like convincing parents. To like give their children to the colony. Obviously, they didn't know all the terrible things that were going on there. Uh, because the birth rate was so low, Schaefer was running out of boys to abuse. Wait, what? They oh, he started was... abducting children from the neighboring oh, area. So like the the members that would have kids, he would ab- Use the boys. Beca- and and, and there there's only were... 300 members, so what maybe... But also, sex was forbidden. Like, oh, this because sounds a lot like The Handmaid's Tale. Women were <sighs> evil because of this whole, like, serpent seed doctrine. He didn't really believe that, though. Did oh, he? but he did. Oh, shit. Well, the only people that were apparently able to have sex was, that's you know, him like, raping boys. That's literally not even in the Bible. Like, where do you even come up with that? I don't know. Some people do. I don't know. 
Like, I mean, it's you, interpretation. Yeah, but no, not even interpret. Eve had sex with a snake. How is that even physically possible? He put the snake up her vag. Like, what? Well, I mean, yeah, be what honest. Like, what that, the fuck? That is what they believe. <laughs> yes. That I is mean, literally that, what they believe. It might feel good. I don't know. I, well, speaking of which, I saw a snake outside. We got to get some snake fucking Where? shit. Outside by the trash bins. Today? Yeah, today. This morning. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to, snake? It was a Gordon snake. I didn't mean to derail you. Go ahead. This really is sounding reminiscent of A Handmaid's Tale in Gilead. I mean, shit, shit be cray. I mean, think of it. Like Jim Jones. This was the inspiration. This was all the same doctrine. So, so... The people within Dignidad were being tortured. It was like a fortress. Obviously, like a lot of cults, you can't really leave. Right. You know, you're drinking oh, the Kool Aid. Just, just gonna run out to Walmart. Yeah, I'll, I'll be back. I promise. But every it was all enclosed in a barbed wire fence. It armed guards, dogs patrolling, and if you touched the fence, if you were trying to climb out. It would, like, the fence, it wouldn't electrocute you, but it would send an alert on a panel, like... Like a like pressurized fence, panel or something? Fence D4, section A, ha is, like, something has touched the fence. Whoa. Go, like, they That's would really go... That's really advanced for back then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's crazy. Fucking crazy. We don't even have that shit here, like, in our house. Like, not even that advanced. Uh, no. No. So these people were going it, like they could they could not escape. And OK, so I was talking a little bit about communism and fascism being on the opposite ends of the spectrum. So when Paul Schaefer first came to Chile, it was in 1963, 62, no, 61. Um, and during that time, the the leader in power, they, they had a democratic government. But in 1970, Chile elected in a runoff election a communist leader. Hmm. What's a runoff election? Hmm. It was like a clo like too close of a tie, and so they had like a secondary oh, okay, gotcha. election to select like the actual winner. And it was a communist. And during that time, and for those of you who don't know. America really liked to interfere with what was going on in Latin America and South America. Oh yeah, my dad used to have a shirt that says "Kill a Commie for Mommy." There you go. <laughs> he used to wear that shit all around the house. I, was, I, I mean, was like, what's a, a commie? Funny like, shirt. Is that like my, a comma? Uh, like I don't like commas either. My dad, like literally, one of his favorite <laughs> insults is still "commie bastard." Like, I mean, it I was mean, the this time. is a man who has a lot of different insults up his sleeve. It was it was the time like communism was evil. Um, and in, for a lot of people today, it still is. And so in when a communist was elected president, Allende. Well, the, the, the Nazi parties in South America didn't like it. Oh, no. And there were no less than three, by the way, when World War Two broke out. In Chile, like three fucking fascist Nazi parties. It was prevalent in the first year, two years after Colonia Dignidad was established. There was one Nazi party that was created and it had 10,000 members within its first year. What? And they had swastikas. They were saying Heil Hitler's and all that shit. Like it was prevalent in that area. Damn. Like, it's like, dude, you realize that Hitler is dead, right? Or was he? He's right down the street, man. Anyway. I buy my weed from Hitler. That's what they're saying. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Well, he fled to freaking Argentina. Well, that's what so, some people say. Supposedly. But so when Allende came into power, the people in Colonia didn't doubt Paul Shaver. This was all like him. And he had a couple of leaders, quote unquote. But they were preparing for war. They had kept close ties with the military in Chile. And in 1973, so three years after this guy's election, with the help of the United States, honestly, Nixon, Kissinger, the CIA, helped take down the democracy of Chile. And they helped put into place 
this guy named Augusto Pinochet, who was probably one of the worst people they like ever. He was really not a good human being. So they're taking down the democracy of a, a dem. Okay, so I, I, I yes. understand, but like. America, the leaders of the free world, the, the democracy wins everything, are taking down the democracy of another country because the leader that was voted in was communist. Bingo. Jen, you don't sound like a goddamn American right now. I'm just telling But you. that is what happened. That's what happened in a lot of parts of Latin America. It's it's one of the, the dark parts of American history, unfortunately. Dark parts. It is. It's a victory. That's what we fucking teach. We we uh, we spread communism like uh, like gigolos spread their freaking hurt, man. No, I'm we just, don't want communism. I mean, with democracy, I don't mean communism. We spread democracy. But that's the thing is it that was it a was democracy. a democracy. It was a very long-standing uh, democracy in South America, one of the longest-standing democracies, and we're like, mm, communism's worse. But what does Chile even produce anyway? I mean, that's such a, like, why would we meddle in such a bullshit? It was probably just an produce? effort to get rid of communism because they were so yeah. afraid of communism spreading. So, so there was some interference. Allende committed suicide. And Augusto Pinochet, mm. who was the leader of this military dictatorship, and he was the leader from 1973 to 1990. Yikes. That's, that Cray. doesn't sound like democracy to me. No, it wasn't. It was a coup d'etat. And so, yep, military dictatorship, fascism reigns. So they would prefer... Jen, talk into the microphone. So they would prefer having a fascist dictator than to having a communist leader who was democratically chosen. Exactly. Because we can control fascism, just not communism. Yeah. For whatever reason, communism was the worst. It, I mean, it was the Cold War. It was the height of the Cold and War. And plus fascism, they buy more guns and we sell guns. So that's well, interesting fucking, you say that about guns. Fucking great. <laughs> because during this time of Augusto Pinochet, well, they're, the deal between Paul Schaefer and his people of Colonia Dignidad got even deeper. So they were, It's. it was uncovered later the largest cache of military weapons in privately held hands was found at Colonia Dignidad. Hmm. Not only were they storing weapons, they were manufacturing their own weapons, like rocket launchers, uh, grenades, uh, machine guns, sarin gas. They were manufacturing this within Colonia Dignidad. It was off limits for the people of Colonia Dignidad, who were, by the way, being tortured if they ever got close to it. Like the people who are they're in like their little Bavarian peasant outfits churning fucking butter because like that was in their. Yeah, they're like Shrek. they're doing their their thing like, oh, I'm I'm working. They're working 16 hours a day without any pay. So it's actual slavery. Within this camp, children in the camp were not going to school. They were being forced into labor, no pay. And in the off-limits areas, they were manufacturing weapons for the military dictatorship. Okay. Like, it's all going on within this camp. Everything's happening. And then the people who were enemies of the state, so enemies of Pinochet, it's like such a fun name to say, though. Pinochet. It I don't know. It's really fun. Pinot yeah. Grigio. It reminds me of a wine or something. Yeah. Pinochet. Um, and, and all the enemies, if they weren't killed, so like right after the coup d'etat happens, if they weren't fucking killed immediately, they were rounded up and they were sent to Colonia Dignidad, actually, to be tortured. Hmm. So it sounds like uh, they had a, a, a nice little... Um, deal going between Colonia Dignidad and Pinochet's regime. Exactly. So, I mean, it helps make sense like why it was such a fortress because heads of the state would go and like check out like, how's my torture situation going here? How Guess, are my weapons coming out? How along? are my weapons? Guess who else frequented Colonia Dignidad? Who? Mingle. 
Joseph Mengele. I got it right. The doctor, right? The angel of death. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So there were many very high profile. Didn't he invent penicillin? He did some good things. I don't believe he invented penicillin. So there were a lot for me, dog. So there were a yeah. I don't think he invented penicillin. He invented electroshock Pen- therapy. Penicil- penicillin came earlier. He invented amputeeism, though, definitely. Mm. So <laughs> let's, let's just no, not credit him not, with anything. No, he did not f- discover anything but torture. So a lot of very high profile Nazis who fled to South America were visitors of Colonia Dignidad. Walter Rauth, who invented the mobile gas chamber. The mobile gas chamber? Oh, yeah. That sounds like the bookmobile. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. But, you know, to kill Jews besides, on the run. Besides no the uh, no ventilation and more gas. <laughs> uh, and Joseph Mengele. So he was, like, continuing to, per- you know, perfect his torture techniques even after the war. <sighs> just to... Because he could? Just because he could. Because he fled. He had a different name. He it was totally safe in Colonia Dignidad and, you know, he whether it was people within Paul Schaefer's commune or people who were against Pinochet's regime. It didn't matter. Crazy. Did he write any books? Um, Bingley, do you know? I don't think so. Mm. So Why do you want to read them? Kind of, yeah. I mean, just to see, like, some of the shit he did. I mean, wouldn't you, like, just see... I mean, because he just had no boundaries. Mm. Kind of I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of books about all the terrible things that he did. He did a lot of experiments on, like, twins. And mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, but, but like, did, he, did he actually, like, I'm document? Sure, oh, he documented. So there's got to be something public. I, they may have been destroyed, though. I don't know. Kind of like in um, Captain America when they go to the lab... What? And <laughs> and there's this doctor who's trying to Doctor Octopus. No, that's Spider Man. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what's that guy's name? Doctor Octopus is that his name? Doc Doctor uh, it's Doctor it's Doc Ock. Yeah, that's the guy. Doc Ock. But, 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 but no, no, in Captain America, he's going. It's during the the World War Two era, and they have this drug that they're gonna inject into people so it's kind of it's like the 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 villain in this specific case was a female doctor but it was kind of like based off of like the nazi um mm. like mangalay yeah i'm more of a captain planet type of guy he needs to make a movie man they need to make a movie of captain planet i feel like they could make a really cool one right now i know yeah, for the, real the, like eco yeah eco captain friendly. planet he'll get pummeled by everyone he'd fucking die right there See, I, I feel like... <laughs> what a pussy. <laughs> I don't know. He seems like a pussy. <laughs> Captain Planet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Compared to the well, other ones. <laughs> we're, the planet's not doing so well, if that's any indication. We do need yeah, Captain, no Pla- shit. What Captain what Planet. Captain Planet, where are you? Help gonna... us. We need, everyone needs their decoder ring so we can like put them all asshole. together and get... Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, I feel like out of any of the Marvel movies, I feel like you might like Captain America, only because... like. I mean, his. I'm his, not gonna like any of them, Jen. I liked Thor because I don't read comic books. But um, <laughs> I think I like Marvel better than DC. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't seen the new the Batman one, but the newest one with Robert Pattinson. It hasn't come out yet. I didn't see the Ben Affleck one either. Oh, Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Okay. Anyway, so we're so we're in Chile. We're in the 70s. People somehow managed to start escaping. Um, but if you went and escaped to the wrong person, you were just sent back to the camp. Mm. Um, it's estimated that between three, like one and 3,000 people were murdered under Pinochet's rule. Mm. At the camp? At the camp? It's believed they were in general. It's believed that at least 100 people were murdered at Colonia Dignidad. Where were they buried? Which is terrible, but is nothing compared to the Holocaust. No, but it's But those are their own people. They're they're murdering Germans. Well, that's... That's fucked. It's not just... We don't know how many people were people who were Germans. 
who who came to the congregation or sympathizers or if they were like enemies of Pinochet. It's believed that most that were murdered there were enemies of Pinochet. So they could have been Chilean. So they were mostly Chilean, the people who were murdered. But the people who were tortured, they were either tortured to death and were enemies of Pinochet or they were tortured but lived and they were Germans. So they didn't necessarily torture the Germans to kill them. They just tortured the Germans to, to torture subdue them. them. To yes, to say like, oh, this is this is your life. I don't. It's like there is no evidence to say how many of the Germans died versus how many of the Chileans died. Um, but it, it seems to be that the Germans were mostly just tortured to be subdued, abused, electroshock therapy, cattle prods like on genitals, head like. I mean, it it's it's gruesome. The potato cellar is apparently known to be like the worst place in the entire camp because it's padded with walls and it was underground, so you couldn't hear anything. And that's where the majority of the people were tortured. Yikes! Jen, but you, it was not. Jen, do you mind going to get us some potatoes? I'll go with you. I'll be behind you with the cattle prod. <laughs> the... <laughs> go on now, get in there. Okay. So <laughs> potato cellar, <laughs> but that that's it. So okay, so all this crazy shit's happening. I'm obviously not going to go into it, all the detail in the world, but by 1990, right, Augusto Pinochet, he is no longer in power. Democracy rises again. <laughs> yeah, America. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I love now, this country. It's fucked, but you know, and now people. Like the authorities are willing to go after Pinochet in Chile. So after he steps down after. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it wasn't exactly peaceful, but democracy once again. Hooray. And authorities are willing to take down Paul Schaefer. Wait, do you mean when you say democracy, do you mean American capitalism? <laughs> no, democracy in Chile. Democracy in Chile. I know, which is probably tied to American capitalism. Who let's knows? be honest. So, so Paul is no longer untouchable. And That's good. Yes, but he's an old man. Yeah, he's an old man. I don't feel bad for him. Though. No, no, we no, because he's, feel bad he's for smiling him. when he gets in the press. Smiling, big old smile. Just, just no, babe. Wouldn't don't lean back because you you would smush Luna's face. Her like. Face is right underneath your thing. Right. <laughs> like, don't Luna, lean back. What the fuck? Luna. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you what are you doing? You would have crushed her face. I mean, what the fuck? Her I, little cheek. I mean, I she know. already got, only has one eye. I know. Luna, Poor thing. You need to be more careful. Uh, but I love you. Be crazy. Anyway, so. So in 1990, he's out of power. Terrible. And. A Chilean child who was abducted tells his mother that he was abused by Paul Schaefer. And the mother, instead of going to the local police, they drive the three plus hours to Santiago and they report it there. San Diego. San Diego. (laughs) And so there, that's where they really take, because if you go to the local police, like even though Pinochet is not in power, you don't know who to trust they go there and they come to arrest Paul Schaefer and take him down. But guess what? I mean, what? Paul Schaefer done made a bunch of money for him. Like, are they really that pissed off? He committed suicide. Or is it because America's like, you better fucking arrest this guy because if not. There, were, there was a lot of pressure. I mean, Back in 1976. This guy made a shit ton of money. There was an Amnesty him. International report about what was going on in Colonia Dignidad, all the torture. There were like, it was known, but nobody was willing to do anything about it. Well, yeah, they're making, I mean, they're producing weapons. I'm pretty sure they're exporting them bitches too. Selling them, making fucking Chile a lot of money. So it was like, oh my God, now we got to arrest you. Come willingly. <laughs> so when he's in his late Jesus. 70s. Fucking Spaniards. <laughs> Chilean. Chileans. Paul Schaefer escapes again. No. So he, he escapes back in Germany when he, there's a warrant out for his arrest for abusing two, at least two boys. And, you know, it's just back to his old tricks. So did they have like tunnels and shit? 
They did have bunkers. Or was it a KFC bucket? You remember that? Yes. <laughs> 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 they they had a lot of bunker Robert systems <laughs> underneath. So he he escapes and he is on the run for almost ten years. What? They finally find him. Actually, a journalist is the one that finds him in Argentina. And they didn't. They purposefully did not let police know because they didn't know like who was still in cahoots with them, like who mm. was being paid off. So he was. Put in prison. He was convicted of, I think it was like 20 or 25 counts of child abuse. Um, and he was sentenced to 20 years in prison. Is he, he's dead now, right? He died in prison. What, when? Well, good. He died in prison at 88 years old when, so that was, I think it was like 2008. So he would still be alive. He could possibly still be alive if he would have made over 100. Because that one Nazi is in trial right now as, at 100. Yeah. So today, so he he died. That asshole was smiling too because I put the videos in there for a uh-huh. podcast. Yeah, like he's being wheeled out in a wheelchair. He like smiling. Well, you know what's funny is it's not funny, sick. but he says like, oh, he he had no idea what was happening. Oh, so you had no idea that you were on the run for ten years, or like, that you started really? a torture it's just, colony? No, it was. It's not even a smile. It's more that that smug. Smirk. It's like that smug, like huh. I can't explain oh, it. It's just that. fucking so disgusting, man. So there is a lot still kind of going on. Uh, like, obviously, he didn't run the colony all on his own. Mm-hmm. Um, one, he had a couple of different leaders. A lot of some of them were convicted and sent to jail. And some of them fled and went back to Germany. Mm. Uh, a lot of people from the camp left because they retained their ge- German citizenship, went back to Germany and guess what? They all, the the residents and perpetrators alike that did decide to go back to Germany, some still live in Colonia Dignidad, they all went to the same part in Germany because there was some another preacher under Paul Branham or William Branham's teachings, and they all go to the same fucking church, like every Sunday. Jim Jones? The no, Jim Jones is dead. William oh. Branham. Oh, well. and so the guy who's the leader of that church, they all go to the same. Is Sunday he still mass. alive? This this guy in Germany, yes. Oh William no, William Branham, no. Oh, okay, but this other guy in Germany, like they all go to his congregation. I'd probably. And he went to Germany, uh, or he went to Chile um, in the early two thousands and like mass baptized some people. I mean, it's just like a, it's just a weird fucking thing going yeah. on there. But there are people who've stayed, and today they've renamed Colonia Dignidad into Via Baviera. And Anna Schnellenkamp is the current director of Via Baviera, and she is the daughter of Klaus Schnellenkamp. That's definitely German. Who was one <laughs> of Paul Schaefer's right hand men? Klaus is fucking. Remember uh, American Dad? The fish, yeah. Klaus. Klaus <laughs> was also a member of Hitler's personal bodyguard. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. anyone named Klaus. What a piece of shit. Don't well, you not an anyone Klaus? named Klaus, but... No, I have an Uncle Hans. Hans, sorry. Um, But <laughs> Klaus... <laughs> sorry. Same thing. So, so Klaus was a member of Hitler's personal bodyguard formation. His daughter, Anna, runs the camp and pretends like, oh, like, they're, what do we need a monument for? So you know, they're like, still fucking torturing people there. <laughs> they're not torturing people, but they are, <laughs> it, I mean, you can stay at a hotel via Baviera. You can have German wiener schnitzel and sausage. Yeah, but can you walk around beer? anywhere you want? No. <laughs> well, then that's I a fucking fear getting, problem. I would fear getting like trapped. That's there. like going to North not. Korea. Yeah, you can visit anywhere as long as you're with a tour guide that you only go certain places. Just don't go into the grocery store that doesn't exist. <laughs> and and Anna's brother Kurt wrote a book about his escape from Colonia Dignidad. So it is definitely like torn. You know, a torn family. The people who live there work there, and that's just because. 
they don't know where else to go. Sure, like yeah. they only speak German. They have no education. That's true. They um, are. There are currently lawsuits against both Germany and Chilean governments for their not only understanding of what was going on there, but their active participation in what was going sure, on there. It's never going to get solved. Um, the German one did. They settled. Each each member of Colonia Dignidad got ten thousand dollars per person. <laughs> but the one because that was more symbolic. Like they were all German citizens. Yeah, but ten thousand dollars for growing up in a torture camp <laughs> the the one against chile is for over a million dollars per person wow um and that one has not yet settled it is probably gonna have to go to trial um a million dollars per person ain't no way that a bankrupt it's over that it's over 200 million dollars that a bankrupt lawsuit. that little country yes. well think about it like these people who worked in the camp they're physically disabled because they worked 16 hour days seven days a week from ages seven until no, whenever I'm, the camp i'm not was disagreeing disbanded. i'm just saying the country Mentally, doesn't have that money i don't, don't uh, well i mean i'm just saying I, it's a dark dark past and dark history that but apparently today, keep that apparently keep going and so, yeah, you you can go just to Colonia rename. Dignidad and and just and go have a beer. If, if it's a above dark where people were tortured, if it's a dark mm-hmm. past and a past it should be, then they should tear down the fences, the guard towers, and let it be free land. They did recently make it like a, a monument, so it cannot be torn down. What? Um, so that certain parts of the area would have to remain yeah, untouched. Yeah, but it's still restricted. That's the problem. It's like but going yeah. to Auschwitz and then you can't get in because there's a gate. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just not cool. I, I'm sure that they would not want certain parts to be filmed. They have uncovered at least one mass grave um, where people were buried from the, the era of Pinochet, um, where at least 40 bodies were mm-hmm. found. A lot of people were buried burned to ashes and they were thrown into the river so that they're estimating there's at least 100 people were, were killed there um but because there are at least 1000 confirmed dead under pinochet's rule and 3000 people missing and still never found um it's probably a lot more than that that's crazy so if you want a whole lot of details be sure to check out dignidad the colony of dignity, ironically enough, hmm. and uh, check it out because I'm super fascinated by World War II and what happened to the Nazis afterwards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'll put the link in the description. And uh, where else can we put it? You want to put a half of the episode on here? Or how no, you doing? I think just link it. All right, I'll just link it. Yeah, I'll link it, and you guys check that out. It's really interesting. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Honestly, Nicole. I didn't even know. I mean, I don't. I didn't know until last year that Hitler may have even fled. I mean, they don't teach that shit in fucking school. No. Well, it's really but not again, likely that he fled. I didn't, fl- that I didn't he listen fled. in school either. <laughs> it's not likely that he he did escape, but a lot of Nazis did, um, including some very prominent ones like. Joseph Mengele and um, oh, who is the other really prominent one? Martin uh, Bormann. No, well, he is a rumored one, but he his his bones were supposedly found in Germany. Um, Eva Braun. No, uh, um, oh. it was another Adolf Adolf Eichmann. Adolf Eichmann Adolf also Eichmann. escaped. That yeah. was the financier. He was like the mastermind. Or is that Hermann? Hermann. Adolf Eichmann was like who the was the financier that. that was or not financier but was like the CFO that was um Borman that wasn't Borman Borman was he was a secretary Borman no Borman was the he was the secretary I thought Borman was the the heir Mm-mm. Borman was Adolf Hitler's secretary mm. okay. he was kind of like the ma- he he did a lot for Hitler mm. anyway fascinating shit yes. All right, that sounds great. Yeah, thanks, Nicole. Yeah, thank you. That was great. You're welcome. Now you got to say, you know, what I usually say. All right, guys, this is Nicole. I'm here with John and Jen. That does it for this episode of Talk Murder to Me. Good night, you lovely, lovely people. <laughs>